فابتدوا يتعاملوا معاه ان we're gonna have to deal with the situation and, and just go try as much as we can to go to some normal um, ف... so what's normal? <laughs> yeah, big... what is normal? بالضبط يا رب يا رب حي and we need to generate ideas علشان غير كده دوني هتقف everyone is trying to do whatever he can to help the other yeah this is the time yeah okay the webinar just started and people are okay we have participants shall we shall we give more minutes for people to come in let's let's wait five more minutes yeah
Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining and happy Ramadan. It gives me great pleasure on behalf of Viva Board to welcome you to our first webinar. Viva is planning to conduct a series of webinars to keep our members engaged and up to date with any developments that take place and can help you in your business. Today's topic is of great importance, especially during this time. We are honored to have today as a speaker, Sumaya Sherbini. She is the co-founder and managing director of Rightfoot. She's going to talk about adapting to remote working, the role of managers and leaders. Throughout the session, if you are experiencing any technical problems, kindly contact Inji Magar or Noor Khalid, who are from the Viva team, directly through the chat. If you have questions relevant to the discussion, you can submit them in the Q&A window. Finally, I would like to recognize and thank our event sponsors for their support, CIB, Polaris Parks, and QNB. Without further ado, I would leave the floor to our speaker, Sumaya Sherbini. Sumaya, it's all yours. Thank you. Sumaya, can you hear me? Yes, thank you. Sorry, I was on mute. Thanks, Yanadia. Oh. <laughs> uh, the beauty of technology, huh? <laughs> so uh, it's a pleasure to be here um, in the first uh, Biba webinar um, and in these very interesting times. If you'll allow me, I am going to um, um, stop my video, if that's okay for everyone, uh, so that we can um, make sure that uh, we don't have disruption in the connectivity. Um, and I want to make sure that my slides are showing. Are my slides showing, uh, Yinji? Noor? Yes, they are. Perfect. Yes, yes, so my, okay. we can see them. Great. Thanks so much. So crisis takes us by surprise. Without any preparation, BEAT also forces us to reinvent ourselves. That's how learning, learnings come to life without letting us know, without asking for permission, they just arrive. Now, we have to learn not only to deal with the coronavirus situation, but with the uncertainty that will become increasingly common. The world is no longer governed by the rules that we know. Today it's COVID-19, tomorrow it will be devaluation, a fall in the price of oil, problems of public order, forced migrations, financial shrinkage, taxes, natural disasters, or even a new disease. The collapse of the price of commodities are among many other realities in this world. It's our reality, but it doesn't have to be our destiny. A lot of uncertainty in the future and therefore a unique opportunity to reinvent ourselves, help our motivation and bringing some sense of normal back. This is our role. Going back to a sense of routine is one thing people will look for to feel that they are back to this new normal. A work rhythm is one of those normals. Part of your role as a manager responsible for teams or a responsible for a department or unit is to find ways to bring normal as quickly as possible with the least risk but also to try to get productivity back on track. One of the key areas of getting productivity up to speed is the concept of agile learning. The concept basically is the idea of alternating between phases of learning and doing, learning and doing again. You now have to teach each team new skills like working remotely and what comes with it in terms of knowing how and when to ask for help seeking help from others and focusing on the results. Adopting these new ways of working does not mean you can't further strengthen collective initiatives, teamwork, or even collaborative learning. In fact, it is very likely that now that you know, people have more time on their hand, they're probably paying more attention. As a manager, the key skill for you is communication. 
encouraging virtual meetings to tackle a topic or think together about a specific idea. The most important role you play now is keeping your team connected, updated, and engaged. Let's assume that you're in a department that's working on a new initiative. To bring you uh, the example closer, let's assume that you're in a business that is strongly influenced by customer satisfaction and customer experience. You are working on an initiative to build a standardized scorecard for the different departments to measure success and failure. Your team who is designing this scorecard needs to have a plan around how they will build the scorecard, the matrices that will be included. And by the way, me, me, some people call matrices KPIs. Um, uh, and then you will need to be clear on how you share this with the different departments, share the plan that is, and that the play, you play a role in ensuring that the end results will focus on the objective, which is customer experience. Your team has to brainstorm to build a project plan, have clear actions, timelines, and identify owners for each activity. As a manager, your role is to share with your team the objective and the required outcomes and create the space for your team to come together for them engage them so that they can contribute ideas, take ownership of specific deliverables, and work together with a clear objective towards a specific outcome. Key also is paying very special attention to new team members or even new members who, who um, just joined the company. These are usually the people that need the most guidance. When employees understand how their work contributes to the company objectives, productivity skyrockets. Supervisors, team leaders, and managers who suddenly have found themselves managing teams remotely wondered how to measure employee productivity and quality of work from a distance. The key ingredient really is trust. You must not be able to see what people are doing, but you still need to equip them with the information they need, assign them tasks, and check on them like you always have. Since you can't monitor, monitor process in the same way, you review um, based on outcomes. Virtual teams working together is no different from meeting together in a meeting room or having a productive discussion. These new skills, despite them being forced on us by a situation, can help us be more open about new ways of working and still being productive. Oh, and by the way, they are skills that will, will help us work differently and become more productive as we shift back to our, um, our old, old normal. Um, a really interesting concept um, that a lot of institutions, companies, and even educational entities have adopted over the last few years is the concept of growth mindset versus the fixed mindset. Let me give you an example to help you understand the concept. When we were young, when we were in school, in a classroom, and were given something by a teacher, if we understood something or not, we did not give up when things got difficult. It was easy to take risks, participate in class, and not worry about making a mistake because our understanding was that mistakes are normal. As we grew older, our defensive mechanisms of not wanting to make mistakes or being defensive when put in a situation grew with us. Example being when you need to explain to a supervisor why something happened the way it happened or why you make a specific decision to do something the way you decided to do it. The concept of growth mindset is that dedication, hard work, and resilience prepare you to be open for continuous learning. And that's how great accomplishments are attained. Our ability and acceptance to be open to learn new things, ask questions, listen to improve in the pathway of achieving more. People with a fixed mindset worry about how they're perceived by others. They put too much weight on being judged and find it very difficult to find default in what they do. They want to feel that they are always right. 
I would really encourage you to read the book. The book is called Mindset, The New Psychology of Success by Dr. Carol Dweck. And you don't have to worry. I will have a copy of uh, the name of the book and what it looks like in the end of this presentation. And I'm sure the BIBA members will be, um, the BIBA team will be sharing the presentation afterwards. This book is a great read, not only for helping you think of ways to bring out the best in people in your work environment, but also a great way to think about human relationships in general, be they personal or professional. Based on this concept and your role as a manager and your role as a leader, you need to create the environment for people to feel that they can ask questions and feel safe and not judged. Another theory I wanna share with you today is the learning methodology of something called 70-20-10. This basically means that 70% of what we learn and the skills, the new skills that we acquire happen on the job. 20% happens as we learn from others, and 10% happens through formal learning. And what I mean by formal learning is if you're invited to attend a classroom training or a learning facilitation. If you reflect on your personal experiences, I'm sure you'll be able to, to relate to the concept. You learn by doing. We also learn by interacting with others then by applying the learning through real practice. Do not underestimate the power of how your team can learn from each other. People want to be able to establish a connection between what they have learned and how it can be applied in their day-to-day -day jobs. I'm sure that when you think of your team, you can identify within your team people who could be considered subject matter experts. In a specific area, and the area could be very job related or it could be a business skill. If you match people together within your team so that they learn from each other, you're not only building an effective team, you're actively engaging people and exciting them about how they can help each other. And for those that are acquiring learning, making them feel that gaining new skills is important for them. everyone's a winner. One other great way to continue to invest in your people with minimal spend and keeping things simple is, is through digital learning. Some people call it e-learning. There are so many methods of e-learning. Some companies create content, some companies buy content, others have their teams um, source for the content that they feel would be relevant to their development. So they, I'm trying to build a skill like communication and I ask my team, go find something that you feel is relevant to you and they will go and source for it themselves and find it, take the course online. I know that there are a lot of companies that have not utilized e-learning in any way until today. If you haven't, this is a great opportunity for you to start thinking and considering the different options. We talked about the importance of getting the best out of people, even if it is in these special times, and people might be distanced and remotely working. We talked about the importance of communication and keep people, keeping people connected. We all talked about embracing the growth mindset, the fixed mindset, you think and you build your team. We also discussed simple tools um, that can help you build capacity. The underlying team, a theme for all these different points we discussed today is the importance of communication. Stay connected to your team as individuals and as a group. And understand that how you feel and supporting them on how they feel is very important to keep them engaged. And we also talked about the concept of agile learning, which is the concept of alternating between phases of learning and doing. Have a clear human capital plan this, that is action-based, does not have too many activities, and, is pro, and its progress can be tracked. Start by defining your business objectives. As, as an example, if your objective is to drive sales, for you to achieve this, 
Do you need to build skills in people that are new skills? Do you need to hire new people to complement the people that you have? Because these skills are lacking within your company or within your business. How are you tracking people's performance against goals? How are you rewarding the best performers? The next steps after prioritizing what is important and giving people the biggest return on investment, automation becomes critical for efficiency, effectiveness, and predictability. So automate to differentiate, as they say. And so to, in general, be it COVID-19 or not, it is important for all of us to embrace the fact that it is time for us to think differently about how we can have the biggest impact on our teams, on our businesses, while keeping clear that these are the times when you need to keep people engaged, challenged, but more profoundly helping them to be part of the solution. I encourage you to create the forums that will help your teams stay focused on what is important, get their minds off the things that are demotivating and embrace the power of knowledge and experience that you have access to within your teams. This is a chance for you to look through your toolkit and really become an innovator. Um, so that, that pretty much brings um, um, the end of, of my talk. I want to move it back to Noor for questions and answers. Yeah, well, thank you very much, Samaya, for the presentation. Um, as for questions and answers, I think one of the main questions people have, especially during these uncertain times, is how to enhance productivity when yeah. you're working remotely. Yeah. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's a really um, interesting thing, and and um, a lot of companies are have the sense of I need to see people sitting in front of me. I need to see people sitting on their desk um, from nine to five or from eight to four or whatever the the window of time that we work in the office because I can see them. I can pull them in a meeting faster. I can observe if they're doing their job or not. And that is really going to be a chapter that's going to be closed even after the COVID-19 because results and productivity are, should be driven by outcomes. And what does that mean? It means that if I give someone a task and if I am clear enough in describing what is expected of that person um, in that task and I am clear enough on when I need the task delivered, I should be managing people on the outcomes of how they deliver the work. Um, and I think this is, again, this, this talks to the concept of the change in the mindset. We have to start changing as managers and feel that we're more comfortable um, giving people the space as long as we have given them the time to ask the questions and the time to explain what the purpose of, of the task is, then, then we shouldn't worry, we shouldn't be anxious, visibly see them to judge if they're working or not. Okay, thank you for that. That was very helpful. Um, something else that has kind of been talked about recently is people are questioning what work is gonna be like after COVID-19 is, uh, is over and how work will never really be the same. And like you just said, we, I think it's causing this shift in a mindset for us where it kind of forced us into this environment where we have to be apart from each other and we have to adapt to that. So how drastic do you feel the change will be after COVID-19? Will we kind of come back a little bit to our mindset before COVID or will it be kind of a mix of both? You know, I, I, I personally think that we will never go back to the old uh, ways of doing things, no matter um, how traditional a business or traditional an industry we, um, we are uh, associated with. And, and let me give you an example. Um, the Egyptian government right now has decided that they are working at 50% capacity, uh, meaning that people that have desk jobs are um, split themselves and uh, half the team works in office and the other half works um, from home. And they shift 
and working in office and home between the different teams. And despite the fact that we, we our, our de ideology is that government is maybe the last adopter of change based organizational changes such as working remotely believe it or not they've already embarked on that will they be more um, open to um, allowing people to be more flexible i personally think that they will and that applies not only to to the public sector but i also think that this will apply to um, um, other sectors as well. I, I don't necessarily think that we're going to go back way back to where we started and we're going to do things uh, unconventionally. Who would have believed that now we are having um, uh, our meetings, our events virtually, and this is becoming a standard. Um, so I think the, the, the transition back will be a mixed, a mix between both a mix between enjoying the fact that when we have an event, the human interactions, the shaking the hands, I don't know if shaking hands will, will come back or not, but just the human element was um, is important. But I also think that the new skill that we've gained, which is becoming more remotely savvy, I think is something that will, will, will essentially be something that we will be more comfortable with. Okay, well, that's perfect. Thank you very much. Um, we have a question from uh, one of our attendees, Hazem Ayoub. He was wondering if you can explore more on KPIs that we can implement for remote workers. Um, how can they learn from each other if they're working remotely because they can't stay connected all the time compared to an office environment? Yeah. Um, way to, uh, or to measure uh, productivity. It's called the SMART, and SMART basically stands for I've got um, I've got a um, uh, a deliverable uh, that I need or an objective that I need to uh, achieve, which is the task, and it, and the task has to be measurable. It means that I will uh, success and failure are clear, and the doer of the task is clear on what to um, how the task will be measured. Um, the, it needs to be action-based, meaning that um, if I am working with Noor on it, we are clear my role versus Noor's role versus Angie's role versus Nadia's role, where except each of us is clear on the actions that we each contribute. It needs to be um, rigorous and it needs to be very um, uh, results uh, focused, meaning that we have a very specific clear outcome um, that we are all working towards and we are clear on what that outcome is and it needs to be time-based. So we are clear that we have a time frame that we are working within uh, and within that time frame, the task needs to be delivered. So um, the example I was giving uh, when I was talking, we're delivering um, something like a scorecard or we're delivering something like a marketing campaign or we're delivering a plan around new sales targets. Um, every step of or every different um, objective or task that we are assigned to, if it follows these smart um, 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 steps or KPIs, then the manager should should actually have a lot of peace of mind uh, because they've been very clear in the beginning and their team has been also very clear on what the measures of success look like. Thank you very much for that um, very um, extensive answer. Um, we have another question from Mr. John Ellis. Uh, he's wondering if some managers feel that remote work is not the way to go in the future, what data or comments can influence this manager? So there's, there is just so much that's been written. Uh, there's a Forbes Insight report um, uh, that was just uh, written, um, uh, uh, I think, a month ago. There's um, uh, reports from PwC. There are reports from Deloitte. I mean, all the big five consultancy firms have been, Harvard Business Review issued a couple of, uh, of articles recently. Um, there is a lot of information that basically says that because
thing that we need to adapt to is the human um, element of A, if you're a manager, take care of your team. If they're struggling because they have to balance between personal uh, priorities because their kids are home and they're not in school um, and they have uh, deliverables in work or you know work related tasks make sure that you're close enough as a manager to your people to understand people's challenges so for me I think the key uh, driver that will help people understand and embrace remote working more and more be they managers or, or businesses or the people, the employees themselves, is the fact that we are able to um, show trust in the relationship, show empathy, we understand, we are clear. If, if I have an employee working for me on a task and they have not openly communicated that they won't be able to deliver the task on time or they have uh, impacted other members of the team who are relying on them, then that's an issue and that has to be raised. Um, but as a manager, I should not be waiting until it is time to report on the outcomes for me to start judging or start um, um, reprimanding the employee. I really communication is very, very profoundly key. Um, and communication has to be uh, two ways manager or business employee and employee um, 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 uh, business or manager. Uh, and so it is it is important that we start to, you know, really, really embed these very simple skills back to realities, learn how to ask questions, learn how to listen carefully, learn how to pick up the phone if people do better on the phone, if people, um, um, uh, you know, regularly want their, their updates to be, um, they don't have time to write long emails or Write, write long reports, then gather them up in a, a call like the one we're having right now and have people share together. So I think it's, it's, there's a lot of a logic or you know, personal judgment that we all have to use, um, but definitely the data is there and definitely there's a lot of conviction around the fact that um, things will probably, um, the new skills that we're learning in this situation are actually on the up, upside of making us better uh, and more productive. Okay, well, thank you very much for answering that and thank you for this webinar. Um, that's all the questions we have for today. Uh, thank you, Samaya. Thank you. thank you. Thank you, Samaya. Thank you for your time. Thank you for your effort and thank you for taking uh, the time to do this, to give this informative uh, uh, presentation. Um, I believe uh, we're going to, if we don't have any more questions, we're going to close it for now. And I would like to thank the participants who joined us today. And we look forward to, um, look forward to seeing you in our forthcoming uh, webinar. I believe our next one is going to be uh, next week. So you're going to receive a notice on it and uh, we look forward to your active participation. Thank you, Sumaya, again. Thank you all for being there. Thanks, all right. everyone. Bye.